You know, I'm traveling into many places in the world, uh, to different cities, uh, visiting so many different churches, meeting so many different people, and almost every one of them, they ask me this question, how can we fulfill God's will? How can we, uh, you know, find ourselves and our purpose? Uh, I believe every person on this earth wants to live fruitful, productive life. They just want to fulfill their destiny. And, 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 you know, so many people, they are... They are observing others through the internet, uh, you know, watching Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and uh, they are uh, they are see you know those for them big men of God, you know, doing a lot of things in the kingdom, crusades and conferences, and they are doing their own ministry, and uh, so many people they just want to have that, and uh, uh, the pr the problem what I see. And the issue that I see in our time that so many young people, they want to have drive-through breakthrough. They just want to have drive-through breakthrough. They just want to get there as quick as possible. And they don't understand the process. <laughs> it's a learned term uh, way. Uh, as long as you live, as long as you breathe, God behind his purpose in your life. God cares about your purpose more than you care about your purpose. You know, and then God placed people in his kingdom, in his body, that they help others have to live that life of integrity, have to live that life of purpose. You know, like I said, uh, all the time when I teach uh, at the KDC College, I tell young people, so many of us, we know how to pray, but we don't know how to live. There is a kingdom life that we can have in Christ Jesus, and we want to help you to go through that journey of discipleship and to be, to, to, to be activate, to become and uh, to be activate in the kingdom of God, in the place, in the area of your gift. And this is, uh, this is the main uh, agenda, the main goal why we are here and why we are talking about this. Even though this program concerning global work and harvest and what God is doing in his kingdom, uh, beyond our walls, our local church walls, or beyond our city, and it will help uh, people to see a uh, bigger picture. It's going to stretch people's mindset. So, but we understand how there is a path, how you get there. And that's why we want to have this program today together with my beautiful wife. And we want to share from our hearts, uh, you know, and the way God was leading us. And what's the reason why we established Kingdom Domain College as we see this huge need in the body of Christ to help young people and next generation to be activate, you know, concerning their calling and their purpose. So welcome, Natasha. I really want you to pour out your heart and share what's inside of you because there is a passion inside of your fire and the word. So we want to hear what God placed in your heart, uh, you know, in terms of what we are saying here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I hope you can hear me now. Yes, I, I can Great. hear you. Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, I am excited to be here um, during this program because I believe that um, the time is now. <laughs> the time is now for the body of Christ to be mobilized, uh, to be equipped, and to influence every sphere in society to uh, preach the gospel because our life is our pulpit, as you love to say, that it doesn't, it doesn't mean that you have to go on mission tri trips to Africa to, um, you know, to win the loss. There are lost people all over uh, your neighborhood and in your schools, at your workplaces. So, well, KDC College is one of those things that, um, you know, me and you, we always talk about this. We talk about, you know, the vision that God placed in our hearts. We talk about the the dreams and we dream together. And KDC College is one of those uh, tools that God showed us to use to equip the next generation. Yes. Because we believe that the vision that God placed in our hearts is beyond us. Mm -hmm. It's 
um, it, it must live after us. So for that to happen, we must equip the next generation to uh, someone that we can pass the baton to. And one of the ways that we do that is through KDC, uh, through the ministry school that we launched actually uh, during pandemic 2020. Mm -hmm. Uh, totally not the right time for us to do such a thing. It happens so quick. And um, I believe that, and even today, what I really want to talk about is obedience. Whatever God is placing on our hearts, whatever God is asking of us, there must be a quick response. And uh, when he asked us to launch KDC College, I remember, you know, the pandemic, people don't know what's happening. What's, you know, buildings are clo closing, churches are closed, nothing is open. And all of a sudden, um, God puts this burning desire on our hearts to launch the ministry school. And to the outside eye and to the outside critic, um, this sounds foolish. This sounds mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. you know, it's not smart. It's not the right time. You have to, um, let's wait. Let's see what's going to happen in the world. Let's see when the pandemic will end and, and all of that. But God says now. And I believe the time that or in the moment that God speaks, we must obey. We, uh, we don't obey because of what he tells us to do. We obey because of who he is. Mm -hmm. And there's such a big difference. And if we don't know our God for who he is, and if we don't obey him for who he is, then the what doesn't matter. But many put the emphasis on what, like, what is God asking me to do? And then that's why they debate. They see, well, when is the best time? Maybe I can prepare for this. And again, the preparation is beautiful, but sometimes God says now follow me now this is the road that i'm leading you now and as we obey god just pours his favor and his goodness on us and he makes a way when actually there is no way so one of but the you know, you know natasha what i what i meant by um uh, by the word preparation it's uh it's exactly what you're saying quickly obey when God is telling you what to do. Yes. Because there is no preparation uh, without God's invasion. I mean, God is leading us. Yes. And, you know, when people are praying, God, I, you know, I want to fulfill your will, then God can show them a place, you know, as a soil where they can become and move yes. in that direction. So for so many people, when we talk about quick obedience, that's what I wanna highlight this because we're not just talking about obedience, we're talking about quick obedience. Mm -hmm. uh, because I don't understand, uh, with all my respect, those people who are telling me, I've been fighting with God for two years. I was like, I, I don't understand. Who am I to fight with God for two years? You know, if God speaks to me to do something, I yeah. just obey. You know, this yeah. is the way we launched the ministry. This is the way we started so many things in our life uh, just because God spoke. You know, God spoke and God gave us a word and then we obey. So we are uh, highlighting quick obedience and mm -hmm. obedience it's the part of that preparation and obedience is the lifestyle under the Lordship, you know? So I just want to, you know, highlight this uh, for yeah. those who are watching us because for maybe for you, as you are watching us, you know, quick obedience, you are watching this program and God can speak to you through this program and you have to stop doing what you are doing and move towards that direction and quickly obey what God's going to tell you to do. But even like about the KDC, right? Um, you, you, why was it so easy for us to <clears throat> obey right away? Because leading to that point, there was a preparation of many, many little milestones of obedience that we had to act upon. So yeah. people think we arrived to this big major thing in, in a moment, in a day. No, there is, a, when you talk about the preparation, there was years and a decade of preparation of uh, God uh, inviting us into certain things that we have to obey right away because, you know, delay obedience is disobedience and uh obedience that is you know halfway obedience is disobedience and mm -hmm. i think to understand who god is will help us to obey 
because so, I, get, I I heard many people like, well, I, I want to come to ministry school. I feel that the Lord is pulling me to go, but um, I have this and that, and I don't know. And I'm just still, uh, you know, again, wrestling with God about this thing. And I'm like, uh, we don't know him yet because mm -hmm. if there is no wrestling there is god uh i surrender all i lay it all down because you are worth it not because you're asking me to do something imagine you know god asks abraham for isaac and 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 he's like oh i don't know me he right away got up uh took his son and went why because he knew his god he mm. knew who was speaking to him he placed emphasis on who instead of what you know we place emphasis on what so much that we miss the who who is speaking to us so i think that's so important but even in in the highlight of of the kdc i believe that this is a such a beautiful way and every time i i teach and um at kdc college and i walk into that room and before i start i i look around and that and every single time i catch myself thinking they are so blessed to be here. They are wow. so blessed to have this time. Yeah. They're so blessed to be in this atmosphere. And every time I, I, I say, wow, I wish I would have had that. I wish yep. I would have had that. I Likewise. wish I would be part of this kind of school and, and um, you know, place nine months aside and, you know, a year or two, whatever the Lord is leading you to do and truly just be in this environment to experience God, to encounter, encounter him on a daily basis and to sit under the teaching for mm. hours and hours and hours. And, and the word of God has been sown in our hearts. And I, and, and then, you know, the years might go by and we will see the fruit in the lives of those people such a blessing such a beautiful yeah. way and we have many friends all over the globe that started ministry schools and i believe it's such a vital moment right now and if you are a minister you can even start it in your in your church because we need to equip the new generation we need to equip them because when we look around we see that they are being bombarded mm -hmm. with information that there's so much information that is poured out daily and they inhale and the culture is dictating yeah. how we need to act what we need to think it's brainwashing our children and all of a sudden you know the truth is no longer the truth people say black is white and white is black you know they mm -hmm. they say good is evil and evil is good and and people are confused and imagine growing up in this ungodly culture um how else can we help this generation and i believe it's it's one of the visions that the lord placed on in your heart specifically and in our heart to create this program and nine months specifically because it's it's like a womb uh, how you explain it that um where the baby is growing up it's being developed until it, it will uh, be birthed into this world so I don't know where you're watching from or I don't know where you're tuning in from, but I believe that uh, if God is speaking to you uh, and maybe in the context of the ministry school, maybe in other contexts, uh, obey the Lord. Say, God, I want to know you. Maybe I never obeyed this quick, but I want to know you like I really and I want to really just encourage and invite every person that is burning and on fire for the Lord. So if good. You are burning and on fire for the Lord. I know we talk about different category of people. We talk about those that don't know what to do with their life, that are stuck or 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 don't know what's next and they they don't know which career they want to uh, you know pursue and so on and so forth. But I want to just speak to the to those who know what they want to do, to yep. those who uh, are on fire for the Lord, to those who are seeking him. I just, um, if the Lord is inviting you into this, maybe this is a next milestone to the destiny that he prepared for you. Because mm -hmm. when you're here for nine months, um, we devote ourselves to prayer, we devote ourselves to um, uh, to the word. We devote ourselves to fellowship. Uh, we uh, do life together. You know, you will do life with those that uh, in your home, um, just like the first church did. They devoted themselves to the teaching, to prayer, and to breaking bread, to fellowship. And those three spheres, I believe, is so important. And, mm -hmm. and it's not just you coming to church on Sunday for two hours and hearing the word. Imagine like sitting in the classroom uh, and just 
hearing the word for hours and hours and hours. And we know that the Bible says that the word of God is like a seed that is mm -hmm. being sown. And before the harvest, I believe that as we sow the word of God into our hearts and as we sit under those teachings, and it's not only sitting under teachings, then we do the practical applications. You know, if you, uh, if you know that you are called to be a uh, preacher, or if you are called to preach the gospel, we have practical applications, um, how to do that. And then we have a uh, practice and and you do that we teach you how to do that we teach you what we know and then we rely on the holy spirit to do the rest and that's so exciting so good so we truly want to highlight today those people who have passion inside to please yes. god like they just want to please god mm -hmm. uh you know there is a big difference uh between pleasing god and serving god because some people, they're like, oh, I, I have no time for this. I just need to go and do something. I need to do, I need to do. So there are so many people, they are doers. Like, they just want to do. But being busy doesn't mean that you are productive. Doing a lot of things for God, it doesn't mean you are pleasing Him. Because maybe He never asked you to do that. You know, and so many people, they need to renew their mind to understand the will of God. You know, the book of Colossians chapter 1, verse 9, I just want to read this passage and we'll follow, you know, uh, we're going to continue to talk. And especially I want to hear uh, what's in your heart, Natasha, and what God placed in your heart today. So Paul, uh, Paul is praying to the church and he uh, following, he says, And so from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of His will. So we need to know His will. We need to have knowledge of His will because it's not about ministry. Ministry is just a tool. You know, and so many people, they have so, so much passion just to do ministry, but ministry is just a tool and ministry needs to have a purpose. And the purpose of the ministry is to fulfill the will of God. When you pursue the will of God, you are a man after his heart. You pursue his heart. If you pursue ministry, you will pursue platform. So there is a huge difference between pursuing platform and pursuing God's heart. So if you the one who really want to please God and you want to fulfill God's will, then you want to pursue his heart, be a man or woman after his heart. And it says that you will... Uh, get knowledge and be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom that's exactly what we are doing at the kingdom domain college you know we break it down the word of god we we help people to see you know the concept of the kingdom of god and have to understand the will of god have to renew your mind so as we walk in a manner worthy of the lord fully pleasing to him it means we live this life that please God. Why I'm touching this, Natasha? Because you cannot please God without obedience. This is the only way you can please God. As you be begin to live a life of obedience. And then Paul says, um, fully pleasing to Him, burning uh, bearing fruit in every good work. Fruit, not just the projects. But your life will become full of the fruit. And it says, um, increasing in the knowledge of God. So the more you begin to increase, increasing in the knowledge of God, the deeper you go into his heart, into his nature, and the more you understand the heart of God and the voice of God, and the more you begin to understand the will of God and the nature of God. So here is the thing, to please God, that's a different lifestyle. What I mean by that? In so many people, they know this concept from the Old Testament, how to serve God. To serve God is just to do things for God. But to please God, first you have to present yourself to the Lord. So first you have to present yourself and your body is a living sacrifice. You have to present yourself to the Lord that he can have all of you and then Holy Spirit can work through you. So it's a different model. It's the New Testament model. It's the model comes through the renewed mind. The more we understand this lifestyle, the more we cherish 
th those moments when we can present ourselves to the Lord, that He can search every sphere of our life, that He can transform our life into His image. So the more I present myself to God, that's what we call intimacy. So there is no obedience without intimacy. Because for you to obey God, you need to hear God. But you cannot hear God when you live this busy life, even doing a lot of work for God. So that's why, uh, the, like I said always, the biggest enemy in our life in Christianity is the destruction. Yeah. So people are distracted, and I know from my own life, I'm fighting for this, to refocus myself, to gaze on Him, to, to position myself, to present myself to God that He can have all of me, and, you know, uh, to live that life of intimacy, to hear God's voice. And I never forget when God spoke to me one time, He said, I want you to seek my face. I said, what, what, what is your face? You don't have a face because you don't have a physical body. And then he spoke to me to go into Genesis uh, 1 and 2 and 3 and to see that, you know, in the, in the Eden, Eden, we see that God show up and he was speaking to Adam. And then, you know, when Adam seen, it says that Adam hid himself from the face of God. So the face of God is the presence of God. You know, and the face of God is the living voice of God. So when you begin to pursue presence of God, because in the presence of God, there is a voice of God. When you pursue the voice of God, that's the face of God, you know. And when you hear God and quickly obey, that's the life of obedience. That's how can we please God, because now it's not about you doing things for God. It's about you to obey God, that the Holy Spirit can manifest himself through you. And then you begin to see fruits. You begin yeah. to see fruit. And fruit will always remain. And that's what's important because fruit will stay in your legacy and it will live beyond your physical body. So I'm super excited to touch this, Natasha, you know, because we truly want to please God. And that was the main reason why we established this KGC College to help young people and not just only young people. If you are 70, 70 years old, but you call yourself young, your spirit is young. Welcome to KGC College. Welcome to this nine month of program. It's not about program, it's about environment. It's about the spiritual womb that you will position yourself. And I'm telling you, I hear this all the time that you can come here with one agenda, but you're going to be amazed how God's going to transform your mindset and you will see Father from different lands and you will be in love with the Father. And then you will want it to fulfill his will on this earth. It doesn't matter what kind of assignment he will ask you to do. But this is such a beautiful life to live that journey, you know, out of the presence of God. And just to observe what the grace of God can do through your life. So I'm excited because I know that that passion inside of you, Natasha. And that's our passion together as a family. So please, I want to hear you more. It's all your time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I think, I mean, just uh, looking around and just, you know, observing, especially the Western culture, right? Um, everything, like you said, everybody wants a drive through, breakthrough, right? Uh, but everything comes at a price. Everything comes at a price. And we forget that to follow Jesus means that we must pay a price. Yep. There's no such a thing. I love what David said. He says, I will not bring God that which did mm -mm. not cost me anything. Yep. Now to uh, believe in God, it does not cost us anything because the Bible says that the demons believe they even tremble, right? But to follow God, it will so cost good. everything. So good. That's such a good because, point. Because... God is not only calling us to believe in him. He says, now follow me. Mm. And I love, I just want to talk about these um, few of his disciples that he called and the difference between them. And maybe you will find yourself in this category as you're watching. You know, when he called Peter and Andrew, 
they were fishermen. That was their business. Um, you know, back in those days, there there were limited, uh, you know, editions of businesses that you can have. And fisher uh, fishermen were one of the business that they could have. So they were fishermen and they, the Bible says they were casting the net in the sea. And Jesus comes to them and he says, follow me. I will make you fishers of men. Honestly, I bet it did not make any sense to Peter, but if he would emphasize on what God is calling him to do, mm, so and good. the Bible says that immediately, immediately yeah. everything, and they followed him. And to me, this is such a beautiful picture because they were not just doing nothing. They were not just, you know, sitting around and, and thinking, oh, what should we do today? Um, they were busy. They were working. They were businessmen. They were uh, doing things. But God saw something in them mm. that uh, if they would follow him and he would be able to transform their minds, so they would turn this world upside down. So, so I don't take invitations from the Lord lightly. When God is inviting you into a space, when he is telling you, hey, would you do this? Can you, uh, you know, can you separate nine months? I don't, I don't take this lightly. I know that God invites those who have a huge potential to so. change their generation, to bring change in their generation and to ultimately change the world. And the fact that they obeyed right away mm -hmm. tells me that, you know what? They had such, they understood who were talking to them. Maybe they did not understand what exactly he meant. You know, I'll make you fishers of men. Like, what, what does that mean? But they understood and they recognized the voice and who was speaking to them. So Maybe good. not to the full extent, but they recognized. But then there was Nathaniel that the Bible says that he was sitting under the fig tree when mm. he was called, right? He was, I don't know what he was doing for a living, but at that particular moment, he was just sitting under the fig tree. And when he was called, he came again. Maybe you find yourself at the crossroad. You don't know what to do. Maybe you're in between jobs. Maybe you are in between careers. You're not sure. You, you don't know if God is calling you, you know, into certain spheres. You're not doing anything. Tell, I mean, trust me, if Lord and God is inviting you, even when you're doing nothing, value that because that means he invites you into this space. He wishes to transform your mind because you have something inside of you that you have yet to discover. And then there was uh, Matthew, the tax collector, okay? Totally doing uh, things that the religious folks did not like. You know, he was taxing, um, you know, the uh, God's people and he was just doing his job. And again, Jesus called him. It does not matter. Listen to me. I don't know wh where you are in life. I don't know what's mm -hmm. happening in your life. It does not matter what you find yourself doing right now. You might be a business owner. You might be doing nothing. You don't know what's happening in your life, right? You might be, uh, you know, doing something that God does not want you to do. Maybe some shady business. I don't know. <laughs> but whatever you find yourself doing, if you hear the Lord calling you, to, I mean, right now we're talking about in the context of KDC College, but I'm I'm saying in general, if God is inviting you and you feel this pull in your in your heart and this this tug in your heart, God is counting on you. So There's good. potential in you that is beyond you that will, you know, when God called, when Jesus called these twelve disciples, right? There was a potential in them that they were limiting. Thing, you know, it was it was limited because you know they thought, oh, I'm just a fisherman. Oh, I'm just a tax collector. Oh, I'm just uh, you know, I'm just doing nothing in life, right? I'm I'm nobody. I'm the the smallest, the youngest. I have nothing to offer. But when God called them. He knew that there was something inside of them that will go beyond and will change the world and God could count on them. So when God is inviting you into these spaces, I'm telling you what an honor and what a privilege. And again, it's going to cost you. Okay. It cost Peter and Andrew to drop their business and to go follow him. It was costly. It wasn't just, okay, you know, I had nowhere to go. Therefore I went. 
It will cost us to follow Jesus. It will cost us. And then remember the, the rich men, um, young men that came to Jesus and said, uh, you know, a good teacher, what, uh, what should I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus corrected him. He said, no one's good except the father, right? But then he says, you know, do this and this. He, um, uh, he was speaking of the Ten Commandments. And he said, I do those things. He says, good. Now, if you want to be perfect, sell everything you have and what? come follow me and the young man walked away very sad why because he had a lot of possessions mm. and you know many people concentrate on you know it's it's really bad to be rich and to be wealthy because you know here you cannot even follow jesus no i don't think that's what that was the emphasis because you don't see jesus walking around and telling every wealthy man to go sell their possessions right God, Jesus says something in that young man. And when he told him to give this away, to sell this and to come follow me, he knew that his heart was in it. He only tells us to leave certain things because he knows that our hearts are so entangled in, in this possessions or whatever it might be. And this is just for me, like whatever I am not willing to give up to follow Jesus, I no longer have, it has me. Wow. And it's wow. something that, um, th that's why he walked away. And Jesus pointed that out, like, it's hard for you to enter, enter the eternal, you know, enter the kingdom of God if, 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 you know, for a rich man. But it's not really that because you are wealthy, it's because it's your not trust is there. because your trust is no longer in what mm -hmm. God speaks to you yeah. you no longer uh can follow and obey god right away all the way and with a good heart because certain things already have you, you and know, when god as, yeah go ahead go and ahead, when finish. god tells us to to give some things away or to give things up or or to sacrifice certain things it's for us he wants to yeah. free us to live this life full of freedom and it's gonna cost us everything throughout the whole bible when you read those people that did wonderful and beautiful and powerful things for the lord because we all want to do uh, and leave an impact on this next generation or in the generation that we live in we want to leave a legacy behind but yeah. for us to do that it will cost us but nobody's talking about the price nobody's talking about the cost because everything is so instant and so easy right now so even to come to a bible school it's gonna cost you friend. I, w I wish to tell you, oh, it's just gonna be beautiful. And I no, it's gonna be painful to say goodbye to certain things. It's gonna be painful to set certain things aside for nine months. Yeah. It's gonna be painful to leave your job for nine months. It's gonna be painful to uh, maybe not pursue certain career that God is pulling you away from. It's gonna be painful, but you know what? Choose your pain. You Regret know, at the end of your life is painful as well. You know, as you as you share in your heart right now, which is so powerful, uh, honestly, you you brought some gold stuff there uh, that we truly need to uh, talk more about uh, some things that you mentioned. But I remember a uh, few families even uh, I, I don't think uh, they care if we're going to even, uh, you know, call their names, you know, like Valera and Victoria. I remember Valera from Washington. Uh, he's a good friend of ours uh, right now. This guy. Uh, he left his business when he felt that God is calling him yeah. to Kingdom Domain College for nine months. And he's a businessman. He left his business. He sold his house. He came to, uh, to Sacramento together with the whole family. Yeah. Uh, I think he has like three kids or, uh, yeah, I think three kids. You know, when he came to Sacramento, he he start he bought a land and start building or remodeling his house for his family to live here, mm -hmm. and then uh, you know he start working at four a.m. Yeah. Four a.m. He was working before eight a.m. and then he was coming to the college. You know he was uh, sitting here. He did not miss not even one day. Yeah, that's wow. unbelievable 
I remember how hard was for him, you know, coming every morning to this uh, to this environment because we have prayers and worship every morning, you know, coming to the to the worship and prayer, seeing his face, and I see that he's tired. It was so hard for him because he was working. Sometimes he was working the whole night. He, you know, he uh, got some uh, side jobs and then he was working throughout the night, didn't sleep, coming to the car college, sitting the whole day, uh, you know, uh, by the feet of Jesus and receiving the word and then come home and remodeling his house and then go to this. I mean, when you hear this guy, the way he was living throughout the nine months here, paying the price just to be here, it's beyond. Like I was praying for him. I was like, God, give him strength. But if you're going to talk to him, Today, because recently I saw him and I talked to him and he said, Andre, that was the best nine months in my entire life. It was the best nine months, uh, you know, such an impact in his soul, in his life, you know, but it was cost him so much. I'm not saying that you have to pay that price, but as a testimony, just sharing, yeah. sharing with you, you know, how much people willing to pay just to be at the Kingdom Domain College or, you know, Baiko's family. I remember they left everything. They come here. It's a different approach because they decided to just uh, to have that one year as a Sabbath and position themselves, you know, you know, by the feet of Jesus and then receiving from the Lord. So if you one of those people and, you know, you have passion and maybe you are doing something right now, but you want something more, we truly want to invite you to this nine month program, to that spiritual womb. I'm telling you, your life will be transformed. Your mind will be renewed and you will understand much clearly and more clearly the, the will of God and God will guide you. And yes. God will will allow you to move forward, you know, in terms of your your calling, your destiny, and that's the best thing that could happen in your life. It's so beautiful that no sacrifice goes unnoticed with the Lord. We think that you know, oh, God does not notice. Oh, trust me, friend. Mm -hmm. Every single sacrifice, he see, he sees everything what you do in obedience he sees everything what you do as he invites you into certain spaces and nothing is unnoticed with him it's just a matter of time wow. and you know harvest doesn't come overnight there is time when we plant there is time when we water and there is time when we reap so it's 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 time and i believe these nine months as as you position yourself again like it doesn't matter where you are in life it doesn't matter how old you are it doesn't matter uh, you know what's happening in your life but if you feel that god is inviting you and there is something on this that you want to be part of uh I say obey the Lord right away because it's the most beautiful thing when we get to respond to God's invitation. Imagine the creator of the universe invites us into certain spaces. So Why? Good. Because he believes in us. He knows that there is potential in every single one of us that will bring so much fruit to the kingdom of God and so much damage to the kingdom of darkness. He knows that we will influence so many people, but first we must be positioned in this good soil where we can grow. When we can, first of all, see God rightly, when we can stop from all the busyness of life, when we can stop from all the things that are happening, when we can stop our mind from racing and, you know, thinking what we need to do tomorrow and on all of these things, when we can just stop in God's presence and just soak in his word, be there with other, uh, you know, my uh, other believers that want the same thing because there's power in unity when we when we come in a place with agreement and power there's power fire comes on sacrifice fire comes on unity unity attracts 
the power and the glory of God. So when we would come together in unity, seeking his face, learning from one another, because we believe that none of us have a full loaf of revelation and we all learn from one another. And it's so beautiful because that you do small groups with, uh, with your home, with the uh, other students and you guys get to practice what you learn. You got, you guys get to share yeah. everything that the Lord placed on your hearts. So you got get, you guys get to uh, minister and learn how to minister to one another, learn how to hear God's voice, learn um, what he thinks of you. You know, we see him rightly. Therefore we can see ourselves rightly. Yes. Therefore we find what we are destined to do. And no matter where we will end up, you know, some will end up on mission fields, some will end up doctors, some will end up lawyers, some will end up, uh, you know, in different spheres, maybe political spheres, maybe educational spheres. But guess what? Because you are equipped, you know exactly why you're there. You know that you were placed there for such a time as this to bring about the change into this generation. You are there on the assignment. You're not there just for a paycheck. You know that this is your assignment from the Lord. And that is so beautiful because, you know, many think that, oh, Bible school is for those who don't know what they're doing. No, I just read about the disciples that Jesus called. They knew, some knew exactly what they were doing. Some were pursuing careers. Some were doing, uh, not just doing nothing, right? Yeah, so yeah. It's not about just those who don't know what they're doing and lost and, and confused. And No, 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 no. It's for those who know exactly what they're doing. It's for those who want to know God deeper, who want to go after God's heart, who want to learn how to live a life of obedience. So when God will place you in the palace, you will know exactly why you're there. You will mm. know exactly that God placed you in this time, in this uh, in this palace for this certain reason. He placed you before these men and these women for a certain reason because you are there on the assignment. You're not so, just there to go through life, to go to emotions, collect the paycheck. No, you are there because God placed you there because there is a call of God upon your life to, uh, you know, to preach the gospel in every sphere, to bring the change in every sphere, wherever you are. And this is exactly what we need to do. And when this mind shift happens within, you know, these nine months, um, we saw people go and, and further their education. We saw people, um, you know, go and uh, some win and um, they wanted to pursue like theology logical degree they wanted to you know get the doctors in theology some some decided oh you know i want to be a businessman some decided that they will go into medicine some went into ministry and mission field right but besides that not only mission field is not ministry our whole life is ministry okay it's not just assignment so wherever god places you that is your mission field and yes. that's where happens with the uh, mind shift during these nine months. And we saw some amazing fruit in people's lives. And again, it's not an automatic thing. We have to be, uh, you know, willing. We have to yield ourselves. We have to obey. We have to say, God, let your will be done, not mine. So um, I invite you. That's so awesome. You know, when we're talking, when we're talking about renewed mind and, you know, just different lands, you begin to see yourself living from heaven to earth, not from earth to heaven. When yeah. you begin to see yourself living from heaven to earth, you begin to understand that your life is a mission yeah. on this earth. It's not about trips. It's about yeah. mission as a lifestyle. Second thing, it's not about projects. It's about fruit that remain. Yes. And, and it's not about, you know, another books, you know, or another, uh, you know, video programs. It's all about legacy, what we are living for the next generation, you know, the impact and influence of transformation. So uh, it's not about just to change something a little bit. It's, uh, it's all about... Uh, your life being transformed, transformed. And I want to highlight one thing, Natasha, because even recently you asked me one question that uh, I was kind of irritated, you know, by that question. And I never forget, just a few days ago, we were uh, sitting in our room and uh, my wife asked me and she's like, Andre, do you love people? And I was like, what kind of question is that? Because of course, I am, my whole life, I'm, uh, you know, 
I'm living this life for a purpose. It's all about people. But you know, as I was meditating, I just want to testify, uh, you know, when you come to the place where God begins to renew your mind, you begin to see fathers correctly. You begin to see not just God, but God as a father, father correctly. The more you see him correctly, the more you begin to see yourself in him correctly. Yes. And then the more you begin to see yourself correctly, that's how you can start loving yourself not through your physical eyes because because through your physical eyes you can look but through your mindset you can see so some people you know they are thinking about themselves through the look not through the mindset because the more you renewed your mind the more you see yourself through him then you begin to love yourself before you begin to love others. So you love the Father when you see Him correctly. Because so many people don't know how to love the God, the Father, because they don't see Him correctly. But the more you see, you know, the way who He is through His light, through His nature, you become in love with the Father, and then you see yourself in Him correctly. You begin to love yourself. And then, as I reflect, you see people correctly, and you love them. And when God called you into the ministry, and you begin to live that mission life, it's not about trips, it's not about projects, it's not about programs, it's all about people so now you understand why you are doing what you are doing it's not about what you are doing how big is your ministry how big is your you know is your platform it's all about how much transformation you can bring from those places where god place you and you know what's interesting the bible says in matthew chapter uh, chapter 9, this uh, passage we always quote, we always, you know, preach, uh, mention this uh, passage. But I want to highlight something here. In, in verse uh, 35, chapter 9 of book of Matthew, it says following, And Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaimed the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every disease and every afflictions it's not about healing ministry it's, it's not about deliverance ministry it's not about demons it's not about manifestation it's all about people to set them free it's all about people to you know uh, open their eyes it's all about them when you care about people more than your own ministry and you begin to understand why god trusts you those tools uh, not just uh, for you, but to use them for the sake of the people. And it says following, when he saw these crowds, he had compassion for them. See, see, you don't see here that Jesus had a compassion, you know, when he saw sicknesses or disease. No, he knows that those things he will, you know, will will remove it from from them he he can heal them he can deliver them but when he saw the crowd who will take care of them when you begin to see people correctly you have passion and when you have that passion you know for them to be free not just to show the camera how powerful your anointing, but you care for them to be free. You care for them to be, you know, guided and restored and for them uh, to see correctly, for, for them to find themselves. When you begin to see people correctly, you have passion and that passion you know, that passion is the true indicator, is the true motivation for your ministry. It's not passion for the bigger ministry. It's the passion to touch people's lives as much as possible and help 
them. So when we talk about ministry, when we talk about calling, you know, we God positioned ourselves to the soil that where we begin to grow, when we begin to uh, even more mature, to see Him correctly, to see yourself correctly, then to, to see people correctly. Now you're ready for the ministry because you're not going to be doing your things out of your own ambitions. You're going to do those things what God called you out of that passion to help people, not just to use people to promote your ministry. So I believe God, you know, dealing with our eternal motives in our hearts. And I believe KDC College or Kingdom of Man College, it's the good soil that God will transform your life and he will prepare you even more for the things that he placed inside of you because inside of you so much more than your physical eyes can look. Yeah. So much more. And I believe that's why the agenda of the Kingdom Domain College is the soil to activate that potential inside of people into the full you know, potential for them to fulfill what God called them to do. Yeah, if you you have something, please add Natasha, and then maybe you can lead us into the prayer because our time is is running away, and I'm happy. I love this program. I love what you brought and what we are talking about uh, in this program. I believe is so needed and is so crucial right now in this hour. Yes, for sure. Um, I, I think we will end here because we can go on and go on. But um, again, our deepest, deepest desire is uh, for sons and daughters to arise uh, and to be released into their God-given purpose and destiny and their potential to be revealed. So that's our desire as, as you know, our families desire. This is something that is deep in our heart that uh, one man said this, he says, we need to live today, you know, to live now as if Jesus is coming back today, mm -hmm. but we must prepare as if he's not coming back for hundreds of years so more. Good. So we prepare maybe just maybe that we are going to be this generation that's going to usher in the second coming of our King Jesus. And that's going to be so beautiful. So as you come to the college, maybe you're still unsure, or maybe you don't know who you are, or maybe God was misrepresented to you in, in different ways, or, uh, you know, maybe you experienced um, different things in life. But I believe that God does not just call you a servant. He's calling you a daughter and a son. And that's such an important thing because when we see ourselves rightly, when we see him rightly, then everything that he will trust us with or entrust us with, we will manage it rightly because so we will know who we are. We will know whose we are. And in the midst of the identity crisis that's happening in, uh, you know, around us, right? Men think they're women, men, you know, women think they're men and some think they're neither or they're both, which is untrue. We believe like never before the body of Christ must arise and equip this next generation for the works of the ministry. And that ministry is to reach every single person and to reach everyone. We need everyone on board. And that's exactly what we're doing at Kingdom Domain College. We invite you to be part of this transformation. We invite you to come and join us. We invite you to, you know, sacrifice nine months out of your life and not even sacrifice invest in your yeah. spiritual growth invest in your future yes. because everything that we have or everything that we um see now it was years and years of investment of sacrifices and i believe that's the same for every single person so as you are watching you can visit kdcglobal.org register today do not miss this opportunity take this to the lord first of all it's not just you know oh great desire take it to the lord say god if you really want me there yeah. would you speak to me and he is so good he is so faithful that he will speak to you because this is who our father is we serve god that is living not that is dead you know we serve him and because he speaks to us we hear his voice 
and come and be part of this global movement and let's change this world together for jesus yeah as uh, if you don't mind uh, just quick prayer because i truly feel inside uh, that some people are watching even now but even for those people who's going to be watching us uh, later uh, that god will speak to them and god speaking to someone uh, some somebody else somebody right now uh, i i just got this in in my spirit and i believe that you know they start having this heartbeat. It's like, is this word for me? God, are you speaking to me? Yes, he is speaking to you. And uh, we just want to pray that God yeah. will give you strength to make a right decision to quickly respond to his voice. Yes. And then don't try to uh, think, overthink, uh, you know, after just <laughs> quick ob obedience. Uh, obey quickly right now then make a decision and then start preparing in in that direction and then don't overthink it because devil will try to manipulate and work. you can use uh, some people just to stop you you know what are you doing maybe you have a business and who's going to take care of this and who's going to take care of this you know stop hearing stop hearing those voices just follow the voice and then obey quickly make a decision and start moving in that direction so i want to pray over you that god will give you grace and he's given you grace and then grace inside of you and the moment you're gonna obey god's gonna release his angels with the assignments you know for that particular season in your life and he will help you and everything will be you know in a better condition than you think just trust him believe him and then like uh my wife says that quick obedience what's matter you know and uh, you'll see the reward and the reward number one i i think the the biggest reward for me is the knowledge of god the biggest reward for me is just to be with him and knowing that he's drawing you closer to him and you can be in his presence and you can hear his voice that's the yes. most value thing in my own life so and in our family so i believe uh, god will uh, impact your life through this so if you can pray for those people natasha and then after prayer stay watch uh, one more video and then we will see you uh, on thursday uh, you know on uh, this program uh, the the time is now we're going to continue to talk you know with different people it's going to be it will be blessing for you so please if you don't mind to pray yes yes um god i pray for every single person that is watching um this program right now or will be re-watching it lord i ask you that you will speak into their hearts if this is their place that you will invite them into the space of growth lord i pray that peters will arise that andrews will arise that sarah's will arise the god that mm. esther's will arise that they will hear your voice lord i pray that they will hear your voice and act upon it father i bless every single person and i, I know that there's such a potential on the inside of them that needs to be activated yes. and that needs to grow father we pray for every single person that will say yes to these nine months that will say yes that will put everything aside that will say no to other things but that will say yes to be uh, to stay planted and to grow lord i pray for grace over their life lord give them favor give them wisdom how to uh put everything in order how to put everything in motion god i pray that you will give them boldness that you will give them strength to obey right away lord i bless them right now and i thank you for every single person that you're going to bring into this new school year father i'm so excited to see what you have in store for them what you have in store for us lord and we're just waiting with anticipation of what is going to happen next i am excited for this next wave or young revivalist that will come through i i Thank you, God, for every single person that's going to be on fire for you, that will get to know you 
intimately, that will get to discover who they are. I thank you for every son and daughter that will place and position themselves to grow for these last uh, for these next nine months. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the favor from you. We thank you for the wisdom from you. We thank you for the knowledge and understanding. And we thank you that ultimately you are our reward. Nothing can measure up to, for, uh, to you. Nothing can stand in your way. Lord, you are everything that we desire. You are everything that we are going for, uh, Lord. God, even the sacrifice is nothing compared to knowing you. So God, I thank you. I thank you for bold young men and women that will say yes to the call of God on their life and that will come and learn from you and they will come and stay in this atmosphere and they will get to discover who they are, who you are and what you want them to do. God, we give you all the glory and all the praise for what you're about to do these next nine months because I believe this next wave is gonna be a wave of those who are truly hungry for you. Those who are, ex they just go after you with everything so god i thank you for sending those kind of people in kd college this semester because i believe that they are the andrews they are the peters they are the esters they are the deborahs that are needed for this generation because the time is now yes. so we give you all the glory we give you all the praise Amen and amen. Amen, amen. Natasha, thank you so much. By the way, this is my beautiful wife. And thank you for who you are. Thank you for the passion that you are carrying. Thank you for all the correction and guidance, uh, the way God is using you. And uh, it's so precious to me. By the way, Pastor Serge and Alina, the ones who's running this school, they are amazing. Uh, they they have a staff and uh, all those people who involved to Kingdom Women College, they are incredibly amazing people so we love them we bless them and uh pastor Sir Janine, if you guys watching us uh, we love you and we honor you and uh, and I, come on guys sign up don't miss this opportunity the time is now and uh, just begin to act and believe uh, and believe and trust the lord that he will he will do beyond your understanding so we're waiting for you here sign up today and if you have that fire and you want to do something, let me tell you, the time is now. Watch the video and uh, we will see you on Thursday in our next episode. When I look at your face, I see faces through your face. I see people through your life that will be impacted through you because you are chosen by God to bring reformation to bring transformation into your generation. We have covered 580 miles. He's looking for a willing person, not a gifted person. In California, we will see you in three days. It's just a preview. Guys, like this is just a sneak peek. Man, this is gonna be powerful, guys. This is gonna be so powerful. Sons, look at the Father and modeling what the Father is doing. You are children of God. You are a royal priesthood. You are no longer sinners but saints. We carry His likeness and His image. We represent Him, His heart, His thoughts, His power, His creativity. In the last days, this generation will have more and more clear dreams and visions and prophetic understanding like never before. I've got the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead alive in me. He's living in me. Jesus says, greater works shall I do. These signs shall follow them that believe. The way you want your future to act towards you, start acting right towards your future.